Welcome to iLecture Online. Now let's take a closer look at the first law of Kepler. Now you may say, well, why did you do the second law first and then go to the first law? It turns out it's a lot easier to look at the second law mathematically. It's essentially the conservation of angular momentum than it is to look at the first law and show that the orbits are indeed elliptical orbits. And we're talking about the orbits of the planets around the sun. So that was, that was uh, Kepler's first law when he realized that planets moved around the sun in elliptical orbits and that the sun was located at one of the two foci of the ellipse. It was a very insightful law, but to be able to prove that mathematically requires a little bit more work. So let's first do some of the basic concepts here. So we had an equation for the radius as a function of theta, which can be described like this, where this is the semi-major axis and E was the ellipticity or the eccentricity of the orbit and of course we have a cosine of theta there because it has to be a function of theta. So that was understood to be the equation of an ellipse and then we could also express it in terms of the semi-major and the semi-minor axis when you see that the ratio is equal to the square root of 1 minus e squared so there's a relationship there between these two. If you square both sides and then make the substitution we can also write the radius as a function of theta as b squared over a the semi-minor axis, the semi-major axis, and 1 over 1 plus e times the cosine of theta. Again, e being the eccentricity and theta being the angle relative to some point in the, in the orbit. And typically speaking, theta is referenced to be this angle right here with, the, uh, with that point in the orbit. So now to simplify the math, because later on we're going to have to take some derivatives, we're going to substitute 1 over r as being equal to u of theta. So instead of using r, or 1 over r, because notice that we have, uh, when we use this equation right here, we have 1 over r squared. So to replace that with an equation like, with a, uh, a function like this, it makes things a little bit easier. So once we've made that substitution, we then go and take a look at the angular momentum equation again. We realize that the angular momentum is equal to the moment of inertia times omega, being the, the radial velocity. And then, um, then we can see, or I should say the angular velocity. And then we can see that I for a point object is mr squared times the angular velocity. So we can write L, the angular momentum, as m omega over u squared because we've made the substitution for r. And of course, we realize that is a constant, the angular momentum is a constant. Then, if we take that and we solve that for u squared, u squared equals m omega over l. This will be a handy little uh, replacement we can use later, or we can also write it as omega, the angular velocity is equal to u squared l over m. And then, of course, we want to go and talk about the equation, the Newton's equation of gravity, where g m big m, so this is the mass of the planet, the mass of the sun, the universal gravitational constant, and the radius r squared in the denominator, that is equal to m times a, the acceleration, which can be written as the second derivative of the uh, radial uh, distance to the object, minus m omega squared r. So essentially we have the radial acceleration here, and we have the angular acceleration the acceleration along, along the path of motion because the planet is constantly increasing its speed and decreasing its speed as it's going around the sun. And so the whole objective now is that we're going to show that this here, the right side of this equation, shows that this represents elliptical motion, that the orbit is indeed an ellipse. So that's what we're going to try to show, that the equation of gravity lends itself to an orbital path for the planet. So that's part one initial setup of how we're going to do that and now we're going to show you how to actually show that this represents an elliptical orbit in a mathematical sense and that is how it's done. I need some coffee.